Hello, my name is Nathan Gould, and in today's video, I want to talk about how we configure attachments in the LaserNet connector. What the attachments functionality in the LaserNet connector does is it allows us to pick files which have been linked to specific records in FO and send them along with the messages that we send from LaserNet. So an example of this might be terms and conditions, where for each of your legal entities, you might have very specific terms and conditions. And when we run a sales invoice, for example, we need to make sure that those terms are sent along with the original document. So we attach the terms and conditions to the organization, to the legal entity, and then we make a link on the sales invoice report that says every time this is run, go and pick up the file that's attached to the legal entity that matches these criteria and send it out along with the invoice. Another example might be for something like service or inspection records, where if we're creating a work order for a technician to go and inspect a piece of equipment, it could be useful for that technician to see the, the previous inspection report so they can track anywhere. And in that instance, what we do is say, go and get the last one that was created from the attached inspection record and send it along with this works order. The example that we're going to look at today, though, is for sales order requirements. So you can put lots and lots of lines on a sales order, which contain all of the different items, but it doesn't always describe all of the work that needs to be done. So what we're going to look at is a complex audio install, which is happening for a customer in Miami. And while the sales order lines contain a lot of information, most of the installation information is actually included in an attachment on the sales order header. So let's go into finance and operations and look at that. So here we've got all of our sales orders and we've got our sales order number 725 here. So if we open this up, we'll be able to see we've got lots of different audio equipment on the lines here, lots of different things that the customer has purchased. But what's really important is what needs to be done with them. So if we go back and we look at the attachment on the sales order header, we can see that we've got all of the installation details attached in a PDF to the sales order header. So when we run this report now, if I just go into my invoice and resend, What LaserNet is doing is it's creating our sales invoice and it's also going and picking up that uh, attachment which was linked to the sales order header and sending it along with the invoice as well. That comes through in an email. And we can see here we've got our invoice. And we've also got our attachment. So how do we configure this? There's two bits of information we need. The first is the document, which is our sales invoice. And the second is where the attachment we need to pick is. So if we go back to our header here and look at our attachments, we can see that this is attached to sales orders, which is our sales table. It's also worthwhile making a note of the type of the attachment and the restriction, because we can use that to filter which ones we pick. It could be that there's 10 or 12 different attachments on here, and we want to make sure that we send the right one. So now we've got that information, let's go to our LaserNet module and report. And then we can go to our sales invoice. And we're going to go to setup and attachments. So now we're in our attachment screen. This is already configured to run as we expect it to. So we'll just go through the way this configuration works. The first thing we've got is our skip generic attachments here, because we don't want to take up whatever generic setup there's been in this environment. We want to configure something specifically for this one report. The next thing we'll see is that our attachment reference table here is the sales table. So this is what we saw when we looked at our attachment on the sales order before, and we clicked on the form with the, the paperclip icon, and it was attached to sales orders. Sales orders is the sales table, so that's where we're getting our document from. And the document we're getting from there is the one that's attached. We're attaching everything that matches the criteria here. And if you remember, when we looked on our attachments, it was a restriction of type internal and a document of type image. You can go as far as creating a custom type here, so you could have a type that was uh, delivery instructions, a type that was terms and conditions maybe, but for this example, we're just using the standard ones of internal and image. The rest of this configuration, we're going to leave as standard. 
The same as with document handling, we have options to add a condition here. So we can write a bit of code or use a query to say when this attachment is run. We could attach different terms and conditions if the value of the invoice was over a certain amount or pick up a different file if the language was different, something like that. But in order to get the attachments functionality to work the way that we wanted it to when we started looking at this example, this is everything that needs to be configured. So really all we need is to know where to get the attachment from, which one to pick it, and which document to attach it to. So that is how we configure attachments in finance and operations.